So that's the interesting thing about society, that there are so many now icons of entrepreneurs. I mean, yet when we were growing up, there were none. No contemporary icon of entrepreneurs, unless no. I'm missing somebody big no. off the top of my head. Uh -uh. Isn't that interesting? Uh -uh. Leave your risk manager at the door. It's time for Carl and Mike. Whoa. Welcome, Carl and Mike. I'm Carl. And I'm Mike. And this is a podcast, Mike, as you yes. know, about, yes. we talk about the things that most people try to avoid talking about. Yeah, it's a shame. That's the fun stuff. That's right. And we're going to get it here. Politics, sex, religion. What else do we talk about? Yeah, just other mishmash of shit that we stumble across. And we rant and riff and rave and mock. Oh, mock, mock, Ignorance wherever we find it. Yes. Which is pretty easy to find these days. It's an abundant supply. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> what's going on with you these days? Uh, not, you know, Nid and I were talking about this. Uh, it's, I, I really, it's hard to bitch about too much rain, but damn it. You Texans. You know, huh? You I, mean, Texans. I mean, all the lakes that have been, you know, like 10 feet down are now 10 feet over. And they're starting to run the dams, which are starting to freak out the people downstream who are on the creeks who are now having to, you know, leave. But uh, it's, you know, it's that seasonal affect disorder. Nina and I were talking about no, that. No, don't even go there. No, I lived no, in I'm, Vancouver, I'm British you. Columbia. Huh? No, I know. but This it, is a... This is a uh, Momentary lapse. Yeah, but those people up there are used to it. We're not used to it down here. Do you We're feel used like to you're having, having seasonal I'm having some, I'm having some sort of <laughs> seasonal funk or something. I don't know what it is. But you know what? I'm. It's just uh, you go this long without seeing much sun. And it I'm kind of feeling like the plants. Saturday. Huh? For what? 33 minutes. I counted it. All right. <laughs> God. It wasn't long. Come to Seattle, my friend. No. Come, come to you Seattle. You know, we've we've gone to Seattle probably six or eight times in yeah. our in our uh, married time, and every time we go up there, it's fabulous. The That's what Seattle out, does. See see it allures near. you. Yeah, it you allures see, you. You go, you oh, see, I could live here, and you then see, you get there. You see the volcano. Everything is just gorgeous, and you go, what the hell are all these people bitching about? And what's the deal with you know needing raincoats and stuff? This was it's no, I mean serious. It has been every absolutely time you've gone, it's been beautiful. Yes, yes. that's Seattle's and siren. Yeah, the allure. Yeah, yeah. And like then said, just as soon as you get the U-Haul packed, right. crook. <laughs> yeah. rain, 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 rain. Yeah, moss on the roof and everything. Well, that's the other thing. I had moss growing on my roof in Dallas. We don't have moss growing on our roof. It, well, Typically, the weather, you don't want anything growing on your roof. but you really know. don't. No. I had to clean the gutters the other day. How'd that go for you? Uh, it's not a fun job. Did you do that yourself, or did you I have did. it? I did. I got on a ladder and everything. I was going to pay a guy to do something easy. I only pay a guy to do something hard. You didn't hard. get on What's-Her-Face's list? What's Angie's list and try and find a gutter cleaner? No, I didn't. No? I didn't. So I went up there, got the Playtex gloves on. Because what happened was we had that hard rain, well, one of the hard rains, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we thought the gutter was broken because <laughs> there was so much coming oh, down. Oh, water coming down. Oh. But it wasn't. The gutter wasn't broken. It was it's just filled with leaves. Filled with crap. Crap, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's some nasty stuff, though. <clears throat> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Trying to get my energy up. I'm a little tired. I'm telling you, it's the rain. No, it isn't. It's, it's not. It's, uh, so re recently, in an effort, Michael, to improve Carl and Mike podcast yes. to take it and learn and, and learn this craft yes. to develop my craft, Michael. How are you doing on developing your craft? Uh, I don't, you, yeah. I, better. So I decided to s listen to some podcasts, yeah. listen to a podcast, different ones, before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. Kind of go, or kind of let sleep, go into sleep listening to a podcast and then go into now that's la, a la, la, that's yeah. a commitment that I can admire, but I have not yet. Yes. Well, done. Probably there, should. There is a downside. So, as those in the podcast world know, Serial is the the biggest podcast mm -hmm. ever in the history of oh, do you podcasts. Listen, have you listened to some of that? Well, so I yeah. So I finally said, well, I should probably listen to the biggest podcast in the history of podcasts. Yeah. Serial. 
and uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, started to listen to it, mm. and then I couldn't fall asleep. Oh, that's no good. Yeah, so I ended up binge listening. For to how long? Cereal, huh? For how long? Huh? <laughs> A couple hours. Three, In fact, you're maybe? breaking the binge listening right yeah. now just to do. I'm still trying to wake up. Our buddy's here. Our buddy's here? Yeah. Larry the transgender? Yeah, the transgender cross-dressing. He's got a gimme hat on today. I'm anxious to see what he's wearing. I saw a little flip-flops. Oh, flip-flops? A little, flip, little what pink color flip-flops. Were the pink flip-flops yeah. with a gimme hat. Okay. Well, so he's being butch today. Yeah. That is butch. But anyway. Yeah. Anyway. I digress. We, so I got into cereal. As one, I can see the appeal of cereal. Yeah. Because it goes over a murder that happened, and it... A long time ago, and right? And you go back and forth. He did it. He didn't do it. He did it. He didn't do it. He did it. Yeah. He didn't do it. And it uh, keeps your attention. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, now I'm tired. Huh. And that is the one. So, you can see the uh, appeal on it, right? Yeah. And that I mean, just well came produced. out of nowhere, right? Oh, it came out the same time Carl Mike Is did. it as well-produced as ours? A, a tad bit better, yeah. Huh. No, it's a, it's a serial. It's an, uh, so, it's a, a one story told episode by episode. How long does each episode last? I'd say about 40, 45 minutes. Yeah. And there's 12 episodes. And that's And it. then they're done for the season. Yeah. It's like True Detective. This whole thing was, this whole hype was based on a 12, 12 episode. 12, 45 minute episodes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But they're going to have a new season coming up in the fall. Yeah. So now think about this. They started, they launched about the same time we launched, did 12 episodes, one a week, and they're out of there. Mm-hmm. So fall. Of 2015. I'm liking that. See, what about Carl and Mike's seasons? We don't have seasons. No, We're it's just, just a, a long, <laughs> slow <laughs> crawl. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we love it. Yeah. We love it because we love our listeners. Yeah, we're going to be doing this anyway, so we might as well record it. That's right. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. So the production values are yeah. real high. Yeah, but I mean, it's not that. I mean, they go back and forth. Uh, she interviews the uh, the guy who's in prison for the murder, mm-hmm. you know, and then she then she kind of talks about what she did or saw, and then intersperses it with little cuts from interviews she did with different people. So it's not like uh, it's it's. Now, and this, then there's music, and I like how they use the music. Yeah. You know, are they? Um, uh, is it going to be another murder mystery kind of thing, I or does anybody so. know? Nobody, Nobody knows. knows right? Well, I'm not sure, but it's kind of like you know. Uh, it's interesting uh, that they're doing that, just like you see on cable more now. You know, it's like True Detective. That was what ten episodes, right? right. I think it was ten episodes, and there's a was new one 10? coming. I think it was something like that. And you know, there's a uh, everybody loved that. Yeah. Uh, Nina and I've been been watch binge watching uh, Frankie and. Gracie, Gracie and Frank, Frankie or something like that. It's Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin. They're lesbians. Martin Sheen and what is? Um, who are they? What are they? Uh, Sam Watterson. Okay, Sam Watterson was married to Lily Tomlin, and they're kind of this old freak couple, right? And uh, Jane Fonda was married to Martin Sheen, and they were this buttoned-up kind of people. And both Jane the, Fonda? Yeah, yeah, okay. oh yeah. Hanoi Jane. That's a little reference. Y'all, y'all look that up if you don't remember. It. So Sam Waterston and Martin Sheen are lawyers, and they work for the same law firm and have for years. And so the couples know each other. The guys have known and been friends for a long time, and the wives really don't get along because they're polar opposites. So what happens is uh, the wives are real bored with everything, and they're, ho- they, they're supposed to meet their the first episode, in fact, the very first scene, they're meeting their husbands at a restaurant, and, they're t- and their husbands haven't showed up yet, and they're uh, wondering whether the husbands are getting ready to announce their retirement. So they come in, and that's what they both want. They want you know this to be over with. So what happens is that the husbands come in and say, well, we have an announcement to make. We're, it's time to start a new phase of our lives, and we're going to start it together. And one husband, one guy, Martin Sheen, turns to Jane and says, "I'm leaving you." And Sam says, "And and says, and then he's leaving her, and we're going off together." They're gay. They've been gay lovers for like 20 years, and <laughs> and so uh, and then uh, <laughs> Jane and uh, uh, Fonda and uh, Lily Tomlin so it's about their move friendship. into the in, into the Malibu uh, house weekend together. weekend house together. Yeah. 
and it's just oh god, it's hilarious. It's Showtime Plus, and Netflix. No, uh, it's Netflix. It's Netflix. Yeah. It sounds interesting. And, actually. Oh, it is. We've I, we burned through six episodes. I don't know how many there are. There was a seventh. We just said, you know, okay, let's go to bed because yeah. you start to get, you know. I'm ready to do the final two episodes of Mad Men. I haven't seen the last one this past weekend, and then the series finale. Well, it was is the coming. last one? Last one was the last weekend. I think there's one more. No, there's, there's one, one more. more. Yeah. And then, but I haven't seen the last one. You want me to tell you what happened? No, shut up. No, here. No, let me tell you. Yeah, if you tell me, I'm be very upset. I know. It's that's a good one. And see, we had we had people telling us. Wally is telling us about that for years. You probably told us about that for. I two. did. Yeah, you and Wally were hammer on us to do that. And it's kind of going, yeah, yeah. and then we watched it, and then boom, we were off to the race. That's races, right. You did like watching. six of the seven seasons. Oh, yeah, All in right. like two hours, speed watch. Yeah. So you can speed you can speed listen on podcasts. You can what? You can speed listen. Have you ever speed listened to Carl and Mike? No, that sounds. Yeah, you, you actually sound very interesting. I would imagine. <laughs> I mean, my voice is high enough, or it seems high enough it is, so it gets like. Texas chipmunk, kind of someone ch- say. Texas chip- oh, the Texas chipmunk. I like that. But you can, uh, no, you can still understand it at twice mm-hmm. as fast. But. You should listen to Carl Mike slow. Well, Come I've heard him. of people speed. I don't really do that. Listen, but I've tried it. It's okay. But it's kind of it's kind of weird because if you like, I don't know. Depends on the show. If you like a conversation that just then why speed it up? Meanders and yeah, yeah. Well, yes. But but if some just kind of information business information show, I could yeah. see speeding. Oh up. yeah, 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 yeah. Just the facts. So you were uh, last week or last time we got together, you were checking into this uh, presidential thing about what it took to be a president. Yeah, it was it was it's been kind of interesting because you know, I. It, I'm probably like most people. I don't know what it takes to run for president. I figured it takes a, a sugar daddy billionaire, which it turns out. Ultimately, it does. Ultimately, it takes a sugar daddy billionaire. Or and, sugar babe. Or babe. Oh. Sugar babe. Oh, that's what we need. A sugar babe? Yeah, I would like to see somebody run with the sugar babe billionaire with knives. Oh, stop. Uma. <laughs> Uma could be. Anyway, uh, so... Um, so really, it all it takes is five thousand dollars and some forms. Yeah, it, there's a couple of forms hmm. that you fill out. One of them that says, "Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna run," and then the other one, or something to that effect, and goes, "Yeah, I'm really serious about running." And this is this is the uh, committee, and this is that, you know. And but once you file those forms, my understanding so far, and I'm going to continue to read into this, then you have to start reporting uh, your fundraising. How much money you what make? What about and stuff before like you fill out the forms? Oh, buddy, that's the fucking wild west. <laughs> what? So exploratory committee? Oh, yeah. Well, you don't even before you do an exploratory committee announce that you have an exploratory committee. We are, we have an exploratory so, so f- committee into what it takes to become an exploratory. So, committee. So, for instance, Jeb Bush mm-hmm. has not announced he's running for president. So it, technically, he possibly yeah. has not filled out the paperwork. Uh, yeah. 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 Correct. Yeah, yeah. Once you fill out, there's a once you fill out the paperwork, you that. are in. Yeah. Once you fill out the first form, you've got a certain number of days. It's ten or twelve days. I could look at my notes, but it really doesn't matter. It's a short fuse yeah. before you got to fill out the second form, and then you you get something back from I guess the federal election committee and or whatever it is, whatever it's called, and and it says okay, you know they they give you the green green flag and you're and you're kind of off but that's that's when they you got to start reporting you got to st- you got to report the money and i don't know so what's that happening is. right now so but let's use jeb bush because yeah he's the uh he's undeclared at the that's moment. right he's, he's exploring so what is he well what is he doing? so he can raise anything he wants yeah they could just give him cash mm-hmm Without so any, any, does he have to report that cash? Or commitments to cash. You know, I don't know whether somebody, you know, definitely if just I wanted to give you, a check. If I wanted or, to give you a check, I could give you a check right now. Yeah. Could I not? Uh, yeah. But you, so you what would, would stop to, a friend of George Bush or Jeb Bush's from giving him a check? Well, I, probably the thing, and I don't know the exact, you know, this probably gets into legal shit. If you, if. If you give me five thousand dollars and I put it in a bank account, I, that account has got to be named something. 
Yeah, but okay. you don't have him, you haven't filled anything. He hasn't filed. Yeah, he hasn't but even declared. You, you need to start accounting for it. So you probably, I don't know what the exact stuff on that. It could be that what they say is, okay, I'm, you tell me, I'm going to give you $5,000. So you say, okay, hold the check. Right. And as soon as I declare, you drop it in there. We'll drop it in there and start, you know, the meter running. But what would stop a billionaire friend of George Bush for just giving you giving money him right now? Nothing. Nothing. What? Why? I can give you a billion dollars first. Get a billion dollars. Right. You know. And, there, and, and then I could run for president after you gave me the billion dollars. Or not. Or not. Yeah. And then in which case I would sue you for you know. Sue me? You gave me the check. Or theft or fraud? I know. But you know, <laughs> yes, there's something. You sue me for theft? <laughs> yeah. If you give me the money. Well, that's true. So anyway, Unless you so, have a recording of me saying I will yeah. take this money and use it for this. Yeah. Yeah. And so. Um, so that's kind of what it is. It's it's kind of weird. I mean, there doesn't there seems to be kind of a fairly low threshold. Imagine that. Which which is probably one of the reasons, like I said, we said a couple of weeks ago, or whenever it was, that there were 298. But I've since looked at other sites, and there's way more than that. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the so here's the deal. I guess when it's um, they're not keeping track of the money. Somebody like uh, Jeb could get money from anybody. Any country. Well, that's kind of what I'm wondering. <laughs> Is there any way to keep? It, 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 yes. Any, any, any person, any country. There must be some, I don't know. I don't know the laws behind it. But let, speaking of Jeb Bush, did uh -huh. you see that little, he got schooled. Did you see that? He spent the last week stepping on his dick. Yeah, well, here's the best part. So he's, he, uh, yes, he has. And he um, was giving a little talk to, to, I think it was in a university setting or some, some setting, and basically, you know, was ripping Obama a new one that Obama's foreign policy has led to ISIS, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And this little, uh, little girl, college girl, mm -hmm. um, gets up and says, can I ask you a question? And basically, it's just basically ends, ends it with saying, uh, Obama didn't start ISIS. Your brother started ISIS. Oh. Boom. Oh. Yeah. How old was she? College. College oh. girl. Yeah, she just... From the mouths of babes. Yes. Just nailed him on that. And that is the absolute truth. And what truth. did he, he say? Not, uh, you know, then they... There's not really much you can say. Right. No. And that's... I would say that's probably true. Yeah. A whole lot because more true Because the bottom line than, is... Than, is than, and I love how the Republicans just try to play that foreign policy little thing. Did he actually say that Obama started is to help is this ba basically in so many words, yeah, his policy, oh, his failed policies has created ISIS. Mhm. Mm no. George Bush's brother's failed policies yes. created ISIS. Yes. Let's get that straight. And the fact that Jeb would say his brother would be a foreign advisor. Mm. Ooh, baby. I don't know if he even makes it out of the gate. I don't think he realizes or is he just arrogant enough? Uh, I don't to know. Not realize the After I was watching him try and backpedal out of some of the stuff he was saying, I'm, I've got to believe that he's going, oh man, I really. He doesn't seem to have the fire in the belly or the real desire to do it. It's almost like he's doing it because it's expected. Maybe it's expected by his dad, by his brother. Y you have to go back and you have to look. Yes. At who they are and what they do and what they have done, and uh, go. I really don't want that guy doing this. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Or that makes you go. I really question his judgment. It's, it's going to be interesting because he's going to have a lot of you know that he's going to have a lot of billionaire support, mm -hmm. Jeb, mm -hmm. and the establishment Republican. Has, has any, try to push that does through. he have a sugar daddy billionaire yet? I mean, Marco Rubio well, picked up somebody he's a sugar in, daddy in Florida, huh? Marco did. He got yeah, a sugar Marco daddy. Yeah, Marco got a sugar daddy last week. In somebody in Florida, a guy that's been kind of behind him, you know, yeah. working the puppet stuff. Oh yeah, pink. Those are pink glitter sandals. He's talking about Larry, the transgender guy, yeah. who's and made another appearance. Ponytail, but he's got a regular old, you know golf shirt on yeah and stuff. so anyway um so basically what the deal is is he got this sugar daddy billionaire 
Okay, he did have a purse. That was a purse, wasn't it? Well, it's, well, kind, it's of kind of a, satchel, a bag. It's a, a bag. Satchel. It could be a man bag. Okay, anyway. Oh, we're, we're losing it here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> focus, 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 Michael. Focus, focus. Sugar Daddy Billionaires, Marco Rubio. Yeah, some guy that's been kind of supporting him for uh, years. And yes. so this is it's his turn to step up to the plate, and he came on out of the shadows, and, you know, I'm the billionaire, I guess, that's going to support him. So Marco's got one. Uh, so Jeb's going to have to get him one, or several. Jeb's, are you kidding me? Yeah, Jeb's got the whole... What used to be the Republican? Yeah. He's got the whole George W. Bush gang. Adelstein had Adelston hadn't put his money or behind right. anybody yet, has yeah, he? Yeah, because last time he went with Newt, so he's a bright oh, guy. Jesus God! Yeah. As if Newt was going to win anything. <laughs> Newt. Newt's been quiet. No, Newt's never quiet. No, he's not. No. Could you vote for a president who had been divorced? Oh yeah, I could, but too. not three times. If they've been divorced three times, yeah. you couldn't? Yeah, no. Uh-uh. Well, because why? Well, the first time, I, I kind of, and this is just me, I kind of give everybody a divorce for free. You get a divorce pass? Yeah, you get a divorce pass because people make mistakes, okay? Yeah. That, that's, you know, that just happens. And it's part of the learning curve. But, you know, around three, you kind of go, there's something funky with this person that he's been married and divorced three times. There's something off there. You know, the more you do that. You're saying that so the more divorced you are, the more potentially personality-wise, character-wise, yeah. you're fucked Any up. Any and all of that. Yeah, somebody that's been married, you know, seven times when you go, Maybe you well, just kind of keep falling for your mother who figure who is. So, in other words, you're not learning from your mistakes. Well, that's for sure. Yeah. Or so, do you want somebody... Well, you're the problem. You want somebody you in divorced this... three times. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So but is that a somebody... problem that doesn't allow you to be president? Uh, in your, I don't, I'm, in your, I, I, your world, yes. Yeah, I'm thinking so because I want somebody that kind of learns from their mistakes. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Okay, I could see that. But yeah, you know, and I find I find interesting uh, the last few elections in France. France? Yeah, where the president of France well, has a mistress. You know, oh, he's got a mistress, and that's kind of cool. You know, yeah. he's got a wife, and that's kind of cool. And the mistress. So everybody and knows ex-wife, she has a mistress. Yeah, everybody knows he got a mistress. So you got a, a wife or an ex-wife who's over here being kind of cool about it, and then he's got his mistress that comes in and out. So he's popping that, and then he's he, then all of a sudden he's got a mistress to the mistress or something along these lines. The mistress on the mistress. Yeah, something yeah. like that. So it it it's kind of. And I'm thinking, really? You know, this is like a little short dude. What is... Uh, power, baby. It's power. I, yeah, it's power. It's Power like is a, to women what bodies are to men. <laughs> power and money, I think you're right. Because it's kind of the... I call it the Rick Ocasek yes. syndrome. You know, yeah. Rick Ocasek, the guy with cars. The, yeah, not, the, a, not the right group, man. Not an attractive guy. But have you ever seen him with the ugly babes? chick? Oh, no. oh my God! Yeah, well, rock and roll lead, lead singers will score and Mick, babes too. Mick, I'm sorry, dude. Not a good man, looking man. Uh, not a good looking man. He can. He's a hell of a performer, hell of a talent, but uh, always got the babes. You see, and so I'm going to give as a public service to all the teenage boys out there. <laughs> Is this a public ser- service announcement? This is a public service announcement <clears throat> from Carl and Mike. <laughs> see, because I suffered through high school. Yeah. And I couldn't figure it out because I was... Uh, Define suffering. Not scoring. <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of it was... Uh, a lot of it was me being shy. So I you guess. were on the bench. I was on the bench <laughs> for a lot of the, of the early formative high school years, especially mm. freshman, sophomore, junior. All right, college. Not till college. Yeah. But... Uh, and all this time, I couldn't figure out why at the time, you know, because uh, girls liked me. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you know, I was a nice guy. I was the friend. And so I was thinking you had to be a bad boy or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't no, that. There, well, well there is an element there, of that. Oh, buddy. Yeah. But it is confidence. If I would have had confidence, even if I would have just even faked confidence. Like the first string quarterback. Yeah. Or but, the captain of the basketball team. Well, I think team. that automatically, you're automatically in. You're in. If you're in one of those positions. You're but I wasn't good enough to be the star quarterback yeah. or yeah. the, yeah. right? But if I would have just had confidence. So that's the key, kids. 
you gotta have confidence. You gotta display confidence. Women mm -hmm. like confidence. Well, and really, it doesn't matter where the confidence comes from. Although back then, nerds weren't cool. Nerds are cool now. Yeah, but you see, but money, see, uh, the ability to school. accumulate money or power, is perceived confidence. Y yeah. Right. You can yeah. You've got a. You've got a. Not that you're have personal confidence, but there's you have confidence. You have skills that create confidence. You can project confidence. Yeah. And I don't want to you know, get a ton of emails from women right now saying, you know, well, how superficial do you think we are or whatever. I think if they're honest with themselves, they would agree with it. I think that society kind of sets it up that way. So I don't even know. In other words, women were, for so many generations, you know, perceived to need the security that a man brought yeah. physically at one point back in the caveman days. But then moved out of that into. But not just a man, the alpha male. They were looking for the alpha male among males. Right, but not all. You know. There's only one alpha male, correct? Yeah, but they all want to hump him. <laughs> yeah, okay. They want to have his baby. They oh, want to have his baby. And I can see half the audience clicking off as we speak. No, no, no. But no, no I think there's a, I think there's a, um, a need for some level of security. Yeah. Though I think women are perfectly fine to take care of themselves. I'm just saying that that's just the way society presents that. It has been in the past. Yeah. Cinderella needs yeah. her prince yeah. and whatever. Yeah. Oh, I know. I think that still goes on. I think that's yeah. you, you can see that in uh, television shows and movies and stuff right. like that. Al. It's but when you're 14, oil. all you got is boner. Yeah. And you need. It will not go away. And it will not go away. Will not go away. Yeah. Well, where is that boner? <laughs> anyway, I digress. <laughs> oh, the days uh, no. of the boner. Oh, the days of the boner. All right, maybe that's the title of the show, The Days of the Boner, no. <laughs> but back then, you didn't have any power or money security. There is no really security. All you really can project is confidence or status. Yeah. Status on the team yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't got the skill sets yeah. for that, then you got to go with confidence, yeah. kids. Yeah. So there you have it. And if you don't say, I don't feel confident, well, tough you yeah, can act I, I, it's I called would, acting I acting would, yeah i would buy that because i, I look, think back on high school and the, kind of the crowd that we hang that i hung with one of the guys nordstrom uh he wasn't a jock but he had confidence he was he w wound yes. up being our valedictorian right. and he always had uh women hanging off him and edwards who was not a jock either best i can remember he always had women yeah. and uh and it was it, it and girls that were interesting. Now there's a certain factor, and it's I think it's still going to be that way. I watched it in, when when our kids were in high school. At least the girls that went to a traditional high school with the football team and drill team and all that kind of bullshit. There still still is that societal hierarchical order. Is that right? Yeah, that's so an far. SAT word that I'm stumbling over. I know. I yeah. can see that. Anyway, you can't even spell it, but we'll go on. No, huh, I cannot. Uh, higher. Don't even try. Let's, let's okay. move on. No, it's not H Y. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, there's definitely that kind of a thing where yes. the, you know the cheerleaders hang out with the football players. Clicks. It, oh, the clicks. Are they still there? And what you know? So what's there were those are little mini yeah, it, alpha males. Oh, al yeah, and alpha female things. And yeah. it, it was there when I was in high school. It was there when our girls are in high school. It's going to be there when Simon goes to high school. Now, Perry went to a different school. He went to uh, an arts magnet school, which is basically people that come down there because they have a focus in one of four different arts areas. And the thing that was interesting is it didn't have football teams, didn't have cheerleaders, so that whole societal kind of a thing was non-existent at that school. They didn't school. have something to replace no. it? No. No. Really? No. It was interesting. It, no. They didn't, See, and, I, and so that was. I th but I think when you get out in society, that it's still there. It's still there. Yes, you think? Oh yeah, oh yeah. 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 Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say the people that uh, uh, make the most money own their own companies, lawyers? They're they're prime picking. I mean. Well, there was definitely the professions. You know, be a doctor, be a lawyer, yeah. be a dentist, yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah, there were the. Yeah. But and those were all job jobs. There was never, was never be an entrepreneur. Interesting. No. You know, parents want you to grow up to be a lawyer, doctor, because uh, maybe are, an accountant. Those are safe, predictable jobs uh, professions that paid well. That pay well. Yes. yes. 
And nobody ever said be an entrepreneur. No, because that that was like wide open, wild west. You never can count on anything, which is really unfortunate because that's it still really, is. To no, a it, no, extent. it's still that way. Well, I think probably less so. I think you probably because people can point to. Okay. This model yeah, works. Yeah, they can point to Stephen Jobs. They can point to uh, Bill Gates. Well, they could have pointed to point Thomas Edison and uh, yeah, but n- Alexander Graham Bell. As, and yeah, I know, but that's kind of... Those were inventors. Those are, yes. But those, it's an inventor that's, employee, that's, which is different than... But that also involves technology that was not that exciting. I mean, could you get excited about a light bulb? No, you could get excited about You freaking about could it. if it was 1908. Yeah, but when we were growing up, if somebody said, Hey, Carl, you can be an entrepreneur. Look old. You know, oh, yeah. Okay. I Edison over here, he's right. got a light bulb. There really wasn't going, a whole pointing to that. Huh? Yeah, there wasn't that, was there, in no. our generation? I don't recall. The, I mean, I remember what? Ford. Henry Ford and Thomas Edison. Yeah. Those were the two yeah. examples. Who who was coming up in our... Um, I mean, in other words, it wasn't a Steve Jobs that was pointed to. There was We didn't wow. have... There wasn't somebody from the 50s that was still alive that was pointed to as a great example of entrepreneurism. No. Really I wasn't. think the company that that was producing the it coolest was stuff back then was probably Sony. Remember, yeah. everybody wanted Sony radios, Sony stereos, yeah. Sony this. Sony that didn't that. come in until the seventies. Yeah, and that's later. But no, I don't remember. Honestly, I You're don't right. remember I, any, there is any no individual Bill Gates, like Steve Jobs no. thing. Like uh-huh. or it was Thomas Edison, Alexander Graham Bell, and Henry Ford, and that was like nineteen twenty was the last yeah. time. So I, we had this period really, thirties, forties, and. And uh, you could argue 50s, mm-hmm. 60s, where there's no really great entrepreneur. No, I think if you Whereas were, now there's Jobs, Gates, the Virgin Records guy, Branson, mm-hmm. uh, now Elton Musk with Tesla. Yeah, yeah. I mean. And you can, you can point to them and say, look, they're doing cool stuff, right. producing cool products. Right. Some of them went to college, some of right. them didn't, but they're driven and they work hard. And so, no, they don't. So that's the interesting thing about society, that there are so many now icons of entrepreneurism, and yet when we were growing up, there were none. No contemporary icon of entrepreneurism. Unless no. I'm missing somebody big no. off the top of my head. Uh-uh. Isn't that interesting? Uh-uh. I think what we were looking at at that point was leaders. We were leading. You it were was, looking at. Yeah, so what? It was Patton. It was. Cause it, no, we went no. The, you were looking at Gandhi. You were looking at Martin Luther King. You were no, looking not, at. I mean, Martin Luther King would die. Mandela, huh? We, I think Martin Luther King. That was in the '60s. I right. mean, what we were looking at—that's yeah. what—and and music. We we look at the Beatles. You yes. look at the Stones. You look at Beach right. Boys. Whatever. Yes, that's that, true. That was that was a totally different phenomenon. That um, uh, which reminds me of an article that I read. Shit, I forgot about this. Um, and I read it just recently. This guy, it was a professor that was teaching at NYU or Columbia or someplace. I don't know where he is. He was teaching this. The class was on the 60s. And it was, they would talk, he would, they would, he would play music about the 60s. And the kids today would go, they, they would, he played uh, Jimi Hendrix, Star Spangled Banner, and everybody was going, oh man, that is sick. Going, that was so good. They're unfamiliar with it. Or White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane. Right, the kids. Not Jefferson the kids Starship today? Airplane. Uh, it, Starship it, back then. Was no, it, it was, was airplane. airplane. White airplane. Rabbit. Yeah. Then it became a the airplane. Began the Starship. Starship. Yes. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> but see, uh, the kids are real fascinated with that era, but they don't get it. And part of his theory on that was the, the fascination was was the freedom. They're risk averse now. Ah, interesting. AIDS. Okay, just take the uh, sexual revolution. So I'd be making very risk averse. Oh, AIDS put the skids on that shit in a hurry. Uh, drugs and overdoses. Right. You know, put the skids on that. But he was saying that the kids today are just totally different from that. But anyway, going back to the sixties, that's what it was for us. I mean, you you'd have people like that that you would look at, and then all of a sudden. Those people were getting picked off. Martin Luther King gets picked off. You Janis know, the, Joplin. Janis Joplin Jimmy dies. Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix There's dies. There's a lot of that. So all of a sudden you're going, whoa. Yeah, and that's part of what this article is saying. It said a lot of these people, these Jim Morrison. Yeah, they're either dying of drug overdoses or in, being assassinated. Or, or assassinated. Kennedy. Or in, in the case of Mama Cass. So Cass, the free thinking. Choking yeah. to death on yeah. a ham sandwich. It's really. Yeah. <laughs> Mamas and the Papas. Love them. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, ham sandwich takes Tragic. One, takes down one of the good ones. Uh, yeah, you're right. I never thought about it that way, but there was uh, a lot of the, a lot of biggies went down. Yeah, 
Well, they were biggies to us, to my parents. They were just thugs. Yeah. You know, my parents thought, you know. Yeah, I remember watching, uh, as a little kid, watching the Beatles in Shea Stadium. Mm -hmm. My dad calling them, you know, animals. They, he, he probably didn't like the Beatles until the Stones came along. And then the oh, Stones, who were wearing the real black hat, you know, my, it's like my mom. Oh, God, he's a crumb bum. Look at him. He's a thug. All right. You know, and I was going, yeah. Well, and he went, I remember my dad going, you know, they were animals like, A, because they had long hair. Uh -huh. And then, B, you couldn't understand what they were saying because they girls were screaming. Yeah. And uh, that's why you couldn't understand. Well, and they spoke in a foreign tongue. Yeah, and they spoke in a foreign tongue. So there was all of that. Which is the king's English. Yeah. So, yeah, they didn't, you know, they, they didn't say anything as far mm -hmm. as he was concerned. Yeah. But I remember really liking him. And that was the first time, actually, it's interesting, that was the first time I could really feel the separation. What? With parents? To, yeah. 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 Oh, and yeah. Then, and then no. that, and so we're talking like, what was the Beatles in Shea yeah. Stadium? 65? So I was like yeah. six, seven, seven, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, you started, you started, my, your past but I, started to verge. It did. Socially. Culturally. So, yeah, culturally, yes. Yes. And um, that's true. Because I know, got Beatle albums, and I got Monkey albums, and I got... But see, that kind of stuff is a shared experience with our kids. Yeah. That's what's weird, is that's a shared experience. You didn't share Frank Sinatra and... Uh, Perry Como. Perry Como and Barbara Streisand. There was nobody to share, like, the ink love, spots. Love, love, yeah, the, yeah. It didn't do that. You know, mom mom and dad didn't listen to Elvis. You know, he was just kind of some creepy little greaser, greaser from, Really, music you know, was the only thing I remember. That they didn't really have a bond around music. I remember my mom's favorite yeah. song was Blueberry Hill. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. Dad, I don't know anything musically yeah. that he was interested. Oh, he liked country music. So how did y'all... From did all, Massachusetts. How did y'all uh, line up on the Vietnam War? I didn't have an opinion about it, yeah. I don't recall. But he, I did. I remember my uh, dad was, you know, he was from Massachusetts, and so he was like Democrat, but I don't know. Was he, he in the military? He wasn't in the military? Yeah, he went to the military. He was yeah. a Marine. Yeah. Oh. Um, oh, then he would have had but an the opinion. the family was Democrat. Pushed. You voted Democrat. Yeah. Uh, and I do remember Nixon coming on board. and. Uh, but that was a Democratic war to begin with. Yeah, it Kennedy was. And, and Johnson. You know. Yeah, so he was for it, yeah. I guess. But I don't recall. We weren't a real. It wasn't real political yeah. conversations in our yeah. family. Um, very little that I remember. Yeah. Anyway. Huh. But yeah, getting back to the entrepreneur thing, I think it's. I think that is an important. And, but how do you how do you teach somebody to be an entrepreneur with the outdated educational system we have now? I mean, we you see, I think it would be easier than ever to teach entrepreneurism. You could, the, the class becomes an entrepreneur. Yeah. Right? So I would be teaching, uh, have a class, create an app, or have a class, yep. have a class come together, and we'll put different students by their interest are in charge yeah. of different aspects of the company, yep. right? So you've yep. got a classroom of 30 people. You've got a company. You yep. know, you've got, you've got uh, R&D. You've got sales. You've got, you can just, you know. And, and let the kids gravitate towards the things they were, they'd be interested in. Let them build a product. That's a great idea. You know what that is? Uh-oh. Here we go. Thought, thought leadership? leadership. That is thought leadership yet How again. How about this? This is way outside. So have the class make a product. Yeah. And if it takes off, the kids in the school share the profits. Yes. Wow. What if it took off and, the, and that's a way no, of the, financing the, some the, things? Financing that whole department, School, that whole or that department. whole department. Yeah, so Self that whole department winds up then being a profit center for the school. Exactly. This is, this is, this is whoa, thought, baby. Thought leader uh, deluxe. <laughs> a double thought leader. A double thought leader. I'm liking this. Of course, we're assuming that the this product the company makes money <laughs> and doesn't lose money. Well, I mean, ultimately, whether it makes money or not is is Look, in, you've got incidental your... to the fact that it's going to spark. Uh, yes. interest in, in these kids of doing this. Some kids I, will go, and, and what they may find out in doing this is that, you know, they go in thinking they're good at math, so they're they're putting in the, in the accounting department, they go, but they see somebody over here in public relations having more fun, because they do. Yes. Right? 
Well, he goes, yeah. I'm more interested in that kind of thing over there. Right. Or you rotate it since mm -hmm. it's the first time. So everybody's yeah. got to spend so everybody's a week spend. in sales. Everybody's got to spend a week in R&D. Everybody's got to spend a week in. Idea. Yeah, that's I really like this idea. idea. Yeah. No, that's How do we do really that? I call on America, every school, yeah. to start a company and get the kids to develop a product and market it. We need a sugar daddy billionaire to, to no, bankroll this. I'm sorry, this sugar daddy billionaires are all taken up running oh, they're uh, busy. Rick Santorum's campaign and uh, Marco Rubio's oh, campaign. Oh, that not going to run. Is Santorum <laughs> going to do it? Is he going to do? Yeah, let's don't talk about that anyway. thing. Let's get back to the, let's uh, go back to the entrepreneur thing. Yes. You know, it could be one of the, like, uh, where they school. compete. The schools compete, the clubs, entrepreneur clubs. Well, what was the, uh, what was the, you know, I remember Risky Business. He uh -huh. was in, uh, what was that called? You were in that little group. The, what you was know, it? Remember in Risky Business at the, but see, what this does in that is movie? This, this teaches practical application for math knowledge. This sure. teaches practical uh, applications for science. Yes. You see, this is where schools have to change. Before it was all, before schools try to teach you and me like they were trying to like give us the Google, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> they taught the Google. They taught the Google, didn't they? Yeah, they Facts, taught the names, Google. places, yeah. what but happened. They did, bah, 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 bah. they did it with a twenty-one volume set of right. encyclopedias. Yes, and that's all that's going to get in the Google, <laughs> right? But really, they taught us the sh most. A lot of the stuff they taught us, yeah, we could now look up in a second. So you can't teach that anymore. That's not relevant. You can teach someone how to search. Yeah. The Google. Oh, you could teach someone yeah. how to find information, but to teach someone just the information when you can find, I don't, if I want to know when the War of 1776 was. Well, here's a good question. You know, the Revolution then what, War, at, I'll look it up in Wikipedia in five our, seconds. Yeah, at what point does our uh, award winning school system teach kids about the World Wide Net Web and the Googles? You know, that should be, that should happen. Right up front. Yeah, I would be teaching that in yeah. first grade. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't you think? If, if you, yeah, if you have to teach, to, teach it with pictures, teach it with pictures. But you no, know, you don't even have to do that. So you I think can they learn need to teach again. Math. They have to teach again, math. instead of A B C D E F G, what you do is you teach them the use of this alphabet will open this whole world up to you. So learn this alphabet as soon as you can, because as you punch in the words. No, but you see, A, B, C, D, E, F, G is because it's a song. It's got a little panana. Oh, I understand all that. So then you, you can the still, you, you first know, got to remember the letters. And I like to hear Simon sing it. That's all yeah. well and good. That's cool. Because get the he, basics. But that should be happening in preschool. It's, it's just like Zoe. H, I, K, lo, me. H, I, K, lo, me. H, I, K, lo, me. They always stumble on it. And the way they stumble on it is cute. Yeah. And his parents and grandparents, you want to go, oh. Isn't that cute? He's learning, but he's wrong. Yeah, but if you went up to Simon and said, okay, so here's why you need to learn the alphabet kid, yeah. you know, it's going to open up a whole new world for you. No, you, you say, uh, if, if you learn the alphabet, you're going to be able to play thousands of games. Yeah, all right. I can see that. But that's before you say that sentence, you say A, B, C, D. Oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you got to do that. But I'm saying, you know, it just, it's no, one I of those agree. things you're that needs to learn. What you're saying is what the school system should be doing is teaching you how to learn. They don't teach it practical applications for any of this shit. Oh, really. I don't know. We've been out for a long time. Maybe they do now. Maybe they're better. Oh, come on. Not in Texas. Texas? Texas is going to teach you that Moses wrote the Constitution. <laughs> he didn't? <laughs> oh, no. His name it's is not there. on the box. I, I could have sworn I saw a copy with his name. Oh, that would be good. What? A copy of the Constitution signed by all these old religious people. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, there's that famous picture, right? What? Where it kind of looks like the signing of the Declaration, but Jesus is there, and uh, they got them all in there. Is it a velvet painting? It could. It, it absolutely it might as could well be. be. Absolutely, Elvis uh, could be in there too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and and Jesus is signing the Constitution. Not signing it. He's there applauding it, and and there's religious figures and and all these people there. He's looking over the people to make uh, sure that yeah, they do. Is with his arms outstretched. Maybe it's going. been a while. I will get the anyway. link in our show notes. Yeah, so you can but uh, check that famous picture out. Entrepreneuring, yeah, I like that entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. well, it's not, and it's just like I didn't get any entrepreneur teachings. No, yeah. well, and you know, by teaching that class, you can sit there and go, okay, I took this class, and then after you learn all the parts, you kind of sit back and you go, oh, okay, whole Earth, whole Earth has this, and then you have little studies, and you say, okay, whole Earth. Or Whole Foods, where you go and buy your groceries, they have a business that's like this too. 
they have an accounting department. They have uh, public relations. You're they right. have somebody Take them that, on a tour of that. Yeah, they have people that go out and meet with farmers to find out if the farmers uh, are are growing the produce the way they want it to grow. And so, and yeah, you take them on tours. There, uh, I mean, that that would be mind expanding for kids at that age. Right. I mean, they would just go completely ape shit. And so, you take the concept of the general concept of of entrepreneur and how an organization works right. and then explore various organizations that they know about. Right. I still remember as a kid, uh, and this was like freshman year of high school, mm -hmm. maybe, or mm -hmm. eighth grade, mm -hmm. right in around that time, and I had accounting, my first accounting class. Yeah. And basically that class was about uh, right, you know, checkbook, savings account, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. When was but, that? In high school? Yeah, like yeah. early high school, yeah. late eighth grade, one of those survivals. two. Survivals. They're survival But skills. I remember being really, I did yeah. well in that class yeah. because I, I saw that this is going to help me out practically going yeah. in life. Yeah. You know, and that's probably the only class I remember practically going well, and I other think, than I think home if, if you, But did, were you already starting to do that kind of stuff for yourself? Well, you know, my mom had got me a, a savings account when I was really Correct. young. Correct. Yes. And that's the beginning of it. That and was that's, the beginning. Yeah, yes. and that's the beginning of it. So you start to see how that can compound, and the earlier you do that, the better. And it really does, and it, and it doesn't have to be a savings account in a, in a bank. It could be just a penny bank, penny jar. Where you keep it, yes. you know, yeah, so you, you start to, too. yeah, yes. and you start to do that, and and You're the right. bank you know, is, my parents did, and the bank that. is just a formalization of that whole process, you know. Right. Um, I don't know. That's kind of cool. That is kind of cool. Huh. All right. Well, we're probably uh, are we wrapping up here? I think we're wrapping up. So hey, uh, another episode in the in the can. Yeah. So. Um, Check us out at carlamike.net where all our good stuff is there. And when you're there, please subscribe. Uh, if you subscribe at carlamike.net, you get our show notes, Michael. Did you know oh, that? that Have good. you seen our show notes? Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, so don't do what Michael does. <laughs> do what Carl does. Because here's yeah. the great thing about the show notes is we put the times in there. Mm -hmm. and so you want to go to a certain segment yeah. like the boner thing, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see it right there. That reminds, that reminds me of a quote out of uh, Love Actually, where he goes, and kiddies, do what your Uncle Billy does. He became a big pop star, and then you get your drugs for free. Oh, yes, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids. All right. Uh, we are also, find us on iTunes. Uh, and, and, hey, give us a rating and a review on iTunes. That's how we move up the iTunes ranks. Of course, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and... Um, we're just about everywhere you want to be. Yeah. We'll catch you next time. All right. Peace. Out. Peace.